Hey guys, Josh here and welcome back to Physics Explained. And today we are launching a new project, Physics in 5 Minutes, where I'm going to explain to you some physical theory or some physical phenomenon in 5 minutes or less. So with that being said, today we are starting with electromagnetic waves. What are they and how are they generated? Intro music. So let's get started with how exactly electromagnetic waves are formed and how they are generated. Right? So on the board here we have a rough diagram of an atom. So in the middle we have the nucleus with the protons and the neutrons inside there with positive charge to the protons. Neutrons have zero charge. And then in energy levels outside in the concentric circles around the, uh, the nucleus we have electrons. The inner shell it has the lowest energy because there is some attractive force between the positive protons and the negative electrons that's bringing them in. But these electrons are also moving around really quickly. So there is also an external force outwards. So you can imagine, let's draw it up here, there's a centripetal force outwards and an attractive force inwards. And these electrons are in perfect balance because they have the right amount of energy to be moving quick enough uh, sort of like orbits, planetary orbits and things, right? Now, in the inner shell there can only be two electrons and then the numbers are restricted outwards and outwards and outwards and it's more of a chemistry thing uh, as to how many electrons can be in the shells. It's not really important at this stage. We'll, we've simplified it a bit here. So, let's say that we give this electron here enough energy so that it can jump to this shell, right? doesn't matter how we give it the energy, but for the sake of argument, let's say we give it enough energy to go to this shell. This electron wants to lose energy because everything wants to be at its lowest energy state, right? Um, so this electron releases energy to jump down into this. So it releases some form of energy. Yeah. Okay. And now it sits in this shell. Right. Now this energy that it releases we call a photon. And a photon can be thought of some particle, some quantum of energy, right? So let's draw this as a box of energy, right? So this is just a way of quantifying released energy from this electron. Now a photon uh, can behave as a particle or a wave, okay? So what this means is that we can think of it as a particle or we can think of a photon as containing a full complete wave. Right? That is a terrible drawing. So let's draw this wave over here. We have the start point and an end point of a complete wave. A complete wave returns back to its equilibrium state. Right? And this distance here from start to finish, we call the wavelength. And we give it this symbol. Right? And the time it takes for the wave to complete a full cycle is known as the period, we call that t, and the wave is travelling at the speed of light, c. How many waves pass this point in a second is known as a frequency, and this is proportional to the inverse of the period. This the frequency and the wavelength is what governs the energy that this photon has. So we have our photon and we know it has some associated energy E with it. And we also know that it has a frequency and a wavelength associated with it as well. And these are related with some constants. So we have Planck's constant H and the frequency. So the energy is directly proportional to the frequency. And then we have our Planck's constant again, our speed of light constant, and our wavelength. Now, if you think about it, this sort of makes sense. The shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency, because the shorter the wavelength at the same speed, the more you're going to get through in a second. So what we're saying here, guys, is that if the wavelength decreases and the frequency increases, then our photon has more energy. But when we were looking at the atom, we were saying that the electron releases some energy. So what we should be saying is that the energy 
determines the frequency and the wavelength of the photon. Now generally, when we consider the movement of these photons, we consider them moving as a wave. And when they impact on something, they, we tend to think of them more as the particle, giving energy to the surface atoms, and that, that we can control them by increasing this energy. And then we can give the electrons enough energy to jump to the shell that we want them to and release the photons that we want them to. Here is a very basic version of the electromagnetic spectrum containing the six different electromagnetic waves that we know of currently. At the bottom here we have our radio waves and these have really large uh, wavelengths and that's really important in what we use them for because it means that they can propagate or travel well over hills for radio masts and things and, and mobile phone masts and as, as we increase up this way towards the gamma rays we find that the energy increases and this is also very important because you don't exactly want your microwave oven in your kitchen to emit microwave radiation through the glass dot. The microwaves have more energy than radio waves which means they're really good at heating up water molecules which is what we use them for. We use them in cooking, cooking appliances. Um, whereas we use ultraviolet light and x-rays for medical purposes because they have enough energy to penetrate through skin cells. Gamma rays have the highest energy and we tend not to use those in any practical way because they just pass through uh, most everyday objects. I mean, you can't, you can't exactly stop them just by putting something else on the other side of a skin like you can with an x-ray. So that's all from me today guys. Like I said, I'm going to be keeping this short, hopefully to five minutes on every try. Remember to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and comment if there's something you want me to do. You can find me on Facebook. I was also going to draw the Twitter, but, but I'm really not that good at drawing. But you can also find me on Twitter, but if you like the Facebook page, uh, Physics Explained, then stay tuned for more news.